Good morning, guys. It is Saturday, June 1st, and you're probably thinking to yourself, in your last video, you said your induction date, and all along, you've been saying your induction date was Friday, May 31st, which it was up until Thursday evening. My doctor called me and told me that there were just a bunch of like medically necessary inductions and things that had to be scheduled for Friday that he thought if I showed up yesterday, I would have continuously been sent home. And if I did get a bed, it would have been later in the evening. <laughs> but today is actually his son's graduation. And so he is not the doctor on call for the majority of the day today. So if I went in like later on in the evening yesterday and delivered this morning or at any point this afternoon, he most likely would not have been the one to deliver me. It would have been just any other hospital staff on call, which is not what I wanted. I really want my OB to be the one to deliver me. I had such a positive experience with the boys and I feel like your own personal OB just knows your history, your pregnancy, um, just like what you prefer in a labor and delivery process. And so he said, if I really wanted him to be the one to deliver baby girl, I would have to wait until Saturday and I would have to go in most likely Saturday evening and deliver her sometime Sunday morning or any time during the day Sunday. He is the doctor on call in the hospital. So um, we did have to push my induction one day, which honestly, once I picked my mom up from the airport on Thursday, I really did not care when my induction was just because I wanted her to be here. So having her here and having plans change, um, I felt very comfortable and okay with that. So yesterday we just had a pretty chill day. We actually did a lot of errands and things that I'm really glad we were able to get done yesterday. It was nice to be able to do that with my mom and then also for my mom to have like a day to relax. She worked like seven plus days in a row leading up to her trip here and then traveled on Thursday. And I'm just glad she was able to have some downtime yesterday. So it actually really wound up working out all together. Of course, I really wanted a May baby and I will explain that more once I announce her name, but it is now June 1st. So I'm officially having a little June baby. Most likely we'll be having her on June 2nd. I don't think I'll go pretty fast tonight. Um, so most likely her birthday will be June 2nd, but for today, it's honestly like 9.30 in the morning. Um, it's still pretty early. I'm planning on heading to the hospital around 6 p.m. And I'm actually really happy about that as well. I labored through the night with the boys and when you're being induced, the beginning of your induction is pretty slow anyway. So it's kind of nice to get the beginning of an induction out of the way overnight when you aren't super uncomfortable and you can still rest. So I am kind of happy all together with how things turned out, but um, my plan is to go to the hospital around 6 p.m. tonight. So I'm gonna spend the day with the boys, finish packing my hospital bag, finish up doing just like any last minute chores and things around the house. And then of course, continue the vlog later on and bring you guys along for my induction. But the boys just came in from playing outside with Harris. So I'm gonna go downstairs and spend some time with them. All right, it is around one o'clock. You can probably hear the bath running. I am running the bath so that I can give the boys a bath. And while they're in the bath, I need to fold their laundry that I did yesterday. So that's ready for this weekend while I'm gone. So that they have outfits. Um, I need to finish packing my hospital bag. I have like, a few toiletries I need to pack. And then I want to pack my like electronics bag that will have chargers, my computer, tripod, um, blow dryer straightener. I have to fit all that in a separate bag. And then I do want to lay out their outfit that I want them to come to the hospital in and meet baby girl in so that Harris, my mom, whoever winds up getting them ready that day, they know what to put them in. So those are three things I'm gonna try and get done while the boys are in the bath. And I am like very tired. I think I might try and take a nap before we go in later. I think the anticipation had me up all night last night. I slept in like 30 minute increments and I felt like I never fully fell into a deep sleep. And it's definitely hitting me now at this point that I'm getting tired. So I think maybe after I get all of this done, hopefully I can lay down for a nap. But I want to show you guys what baby girl is looking like. Maybe do, I feel like I'll do like one last bump update before the hospital or at the hospital, but I'll show you guys what she's looking like right now. This is what we are working with right now. Just some comfy clothes. Um, 
probably just gonna throw on like sweatpants or something to head to the hospital since you have to change into a gown anyway when you get there but I'm trying to soak in all the last minute bump cuddles and bump touches and movements from her knowing that this is gonna be done soon and since she is like 99.9% .9 our last baby it'll be like the last time that I ever get to feel this Okay, I just went ahead and put dry shampoo in my hair so that I could pack it away. I think these are the last like three things I need to put in my toiletry bag. So I have my little bag here. This dry shampoo, my deodorant that I already have on, and then a hairbrush, and then my blow dryer and straightener I will bring in my other bag if I want to, or like if I wind up washing my hair after I have her. I feel like when I took a shower after I had the boys, I don't really remember if I washed my hair or not, but I'm going to bring that stuff just in case I want to do that. And then these are the outfits that the boys are going to wear when they come to the hospital. These are shirts I shared in my last video. I thought they were super cute because they're little twin shirts. And then gray and black shorts. I'm laying this out for Harris so that whoever gets the boys dressed that day knows they're in here in her room. And I think after I pack my electronics bag, I'm pretty much ready to go. I will also pack like my personal bag with obviously like, my ID and my wallet and stuff like that. But I think that's everything I need. Sunday morning. My induction got canceled yesterday, but I just got the call that it is officially time to head in. I just took a shower this morning and quickly blew up my hair. My face is so red. I feel like I'm so frazzled now that it's actually time to head out and go, but I still need to pack my electronics bag quick and then my mom and I are going to jump in the car and head to the hospital. Crazy. I'm here to give you guys an update a few hours in. We got here around 8.30. It is now almost 3 o'clock. I've been put on Pitocin. I'm on a level 6. I'm consistently having contractions that they're able to see on like the monitor and everything. Um, however, I'm only 2 centimeters dilated. I came in at a little bit over a 1. They actually did just break my water, which is why my face is so red. It was very painful. So hopefully this will speed some stuff up and we'll see some more momentum and movement, but it's going well so far. Nothing is super painful either being on the Pitocin. I haven't even asked for my epidural yet. So we'll see if breaking my water makes it so I need my epidural. I am planning on getting one, I think, 
but so far nothing extremely uncomfortable. So that is a little mid-labor update. I have my mom with me. She just went downstairs to get herself some food, pick up food. Um, I unfortunately cannot eat, so that kind of sucks, but I will keep taking clips here or there throughout the day. That's like the easiest way to get this done, and then whenever I do have a moment to give you guys an update, I of course will give you guys an update. So, so far so good. How many hours in? 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 5-ish hours in. So far so good. Nothing extremely painful, but we're getting things going. not the best because the sun is going down it is now i think around 7 38 um my pitocin has been up to over a 10 i've had the epidural going i actually had to click it two times because i started to even feel the contractions with the epidural or with yeah with the epidural i started to feel painful contractions so i do have a button that i'm able to click to administer more so i had to do that twice um, they're doing shift change soon and my doctor should be clocking in and then at that point they will come in and check me and see if I am dilated or like what I'm dilated at. Um, the last time I think I told you guys it was around 3 o'clock and I was only a 2 but I definitely think I've progressed more considering the contractions I'm feeling. Like if I can feel them with the epidural, they're for sure like an 8, 9, or 10 without. Um, they're like a 1 or a 2 with the epidural. So once I get checked again, I'll have more of an idea of what's really going on. My mom is still here with me. And then once I get closer to pushing, Harris's parents will go to our house and then Harris will come here. So, so far smooth sailing, so far not too bad. I'm hoping to deliver at some point in the middle of the night, if not early morning. But like I said, I'll know more once I get checked again and I can get an idea of where I'm at. Like I'm hoping I'm at least like a six. I think that would be good and I would feel good about continuing through the night if I knew I was like at least a six right now. not the best the blinds are still down i also know that i look rough because i got maybe 45 minutes of sleep last night and i've been biting my lip so please excuse that but i'm here to give a brief update baby girl is obviously here things went a lot faster than anticipated the last time i spoke to you guys i was four centimeters dilated and i honestly thought I was going to labor through the night. I genuinely didn't think I was going to have her until after 4 a.m. with how slow I dilated from two to four centimeters. It was about five and a half hours and I only went up two centimeters and was still only 70% effaced. However, I felt like I could still feel contractions a lot. And I felt like with the amount of epidural that I was administering myself, because I did have like a self-administer like push button, um, I felt like I should not have been able to feel as much as I felt. And so I kept telling the nurses that I was in pain and they did call the anesthesiologist to give me like a bump of something in my epidural, like a more constant drip. And he told me it should have worked in three contractions and three contractions later I had one light contraction and then the next one after that I immediately turned to my mom and was like I feel pressure I feel it in my butt this is very painful and that was at 9 20. so at 9 35 I was checked I was 9.5 centimeters, 100% effaced. She was a plus two position. Okay, the pediatrician wound up coming in and checking her. 
and I was going to feed her, but now she fell asleep, so I need to try and wake her up and feed her, but, um, yeah, it was a chaotic and quick ending to my labor. I'm obviously going to film a full sit-down labor and delivery video where you guys will get, like, the full play-by-play -play of everything, but it went super quick in the end, and I wound up having her at 10.45, so... Um, I don't know if I'm going to get much more footage today. I do think I want to film, like, a voiceover, like, my first 24 hours with baby. So, I'll probably start that now. The boys are going to come and visit me later on after school. So, I'll get that footage and then we'll kind of see what else. But she's here and I could not be any happier. Okay, I'm finally up and walking. And before I go ahead and end the video, I wanted to show you guys what my belly is looking like at, let's see. It's almost two o'clock. I had her at 10.45, so 16 hours, 15 hours post-delivery. Definitely very squishy, super empty up top. My stretch marks really don't look bad at all. Obviously my linen nigra and my belly button is still sticking out, but I feel like compared to when I had the boys, I'm already going down so much and it feels like so good to be able to crunch over and lean over and not have like a big baby in there. I know I barely showed her in this video, but in my next video, which I said I thought I was gonna do like a 24 hours after birth video, but it's been kind of an anticlimactic day. So I didn't really film anything today for that. Um, I think I will vlog tomorrow, my day home, and I will show baby girl and announce her name. But the boys are coming to see her today and I am going to take clips of that and then feature that in um, my next video. So, officially closing out my labor and delivery vlog. Like I said, you guys are gonna get like a full story from me where I'll go into detail of all the craziness that went on yesterday and just how kind of fast and hectic my delivery wound up being. But this is what I'm looking like and I'm feeling really good now that I'm finally up and moving and baby girl's doing good. And so I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.